Hi everyone, welcome to your next criminology video. This is for Unit 1, 1 1.5. This one explores the media representation on public perception of crime. So let's get started. Excellent. So, explain the impact of media representation on the public perception of crime. So, this is assessment criteria 1.5. This unit requires you to explain the impact of media representations on the public perception of crime and give detailed, relevant examples to explain the impact of media representations through looking at things like moral panic, stereotyping of criminals, changing priorities, and emphasis. So again, as always, it's about examples, 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 and about explaining, in this case, the impact. So the key impacts that we are going to examine are moral panic, changing public concerns and attitudes, perceptions of crime trends, stereotyping of criminals, levels of response to crime and types of punishment, and the changing priorities and emphasis. And so within this, we're going to look at how the media report crime. Um, so how does the media represent and, and report on crimes um, and criminals? And, and this can have a major impact on how much crime crime people think there is, whether they believe it's getting worse, how much of a threat they believe it to be. And this impact can have a ripple effect. We looked at a ripple effect earlier on in this unit, but this idea of how many people it can affect, as people can then pressure the police, courts or governments to act on perceived problems. So it's a huge thing is the media and how the media impacts on crime. And then this then... Um, impacts upon our understanding of crime and maybe a bit more of an over-exaggerated understanding of crime or maybe gives us, it says, moral panic over crime or makes us stereotype certain people thinking that they must be criminals because of the way the media represents groups of people. So let's have a look. Impact one then, moral panic. Research shows that the media exaggerates levels of serious crime and this leads to moral panic. Sociologist Stanley Cohen in Folk Devils and Moral Panics suggested that a moral panic occurs when a condition, episode, person or group of persons emerges to become defined as a threat to societal values and interests. So within that quote there you've got this idea that it's a condition, episode, person or groups of persons. So this idea that it could be an event, it could be a specific person, it could be a particular group of people that in some way cause a threat to society. This then creates and causes moral panics. One of the first moral panics was in the 1960s around the mods and rockers, although the roots go much further back uh, from these. So again, remind yourself of the mods and rockers, maybe watch a few documentaries, maybe go back and have a look at some of the newspaper parts of the mods and rockers and see how the media influenced um, how we understand their situations or how these two groups of people really banged heads together, but how the media maybe exaggerated this into something the, more than what it actually was originally. This is then this then leads into what is called the deviance amplification spiral. Leslie Wilkins argued that the media portrayal of crime can sometimes lead to the deviance amplification spiral. So as we know, deviance is not a crime, but it's it's something that goes against the norm, um, often in a negative sense. So deviance is something that people sh um, see as negative, not always, but it's very much out of the norm. This is the process where the media report on a situation, mods and rockers, for example, the authorities then try to control it. So if you remember that video we watched about how the police then came in and then what started out as a bit of a quarrel turned into a big riot. But this then only leads to more deviance, not less. So when the police get involved, this doesn't then deter it. It actually makes it worse quite often. So the authorities try then harder to control it. So the authorities fight back even more. And so then the deviance and shoes and so on and so on. So... This is it's a vicious cycle, it's a vicious circle, it's a vicious spiral in this sense. This is the idea that 
something's deviant, police get involved, they're more deviant sometimes than the police have to up it, they're more deviant, etc. So it's kind of like this cycle, as we see here, of um, police versus crime. And then obviously the media and how they represent this involvement also amplifies the situation. Amplification meaning amplify, meaning make louder, get bigger. Other moral panics. So these are some examples, as we've already said, examples are very, very important. These are some of the examples that I recommend you having a look into and also using in your exam answers. So you could have a look at Islamophobia and how the media has contributed towards our view on terrorism versus Islam or Muslims and how, again, this is portrayed. You could have a look at how homosexuality, AIDS and HIV was talked about. That's why when Princess Diana did all of this charity work, she really broke down a lot of barriers that had been created by the media around things such as H, uh, HIV and AIDS. There's also things about knife crime. Is this a panic or a real threat? And migrants, what moral panic has the media representation led to? So again, um, immigration, how has the media portrayed immigration? Do you think it's been in a positive or negative way? How do you think the audience has reacted to this media representation? And do you think that this has been exaggerated or made worse in some way? So they're really good examples that you could also use and look into. But obviously you can't just put e.g. Islamophobia, you have to back it up with something. Number two, impact to change in public concerns and attitudes. Public concern about types of crime changes over time, often in response to things like media reporting and moral panic. So, for example, the public concern and anxiety about the threat of mods and rockers grew out of the media portrayal that they were out of control and a threat to social order. Most people haven't really even known about the mods and the rockers, but it was the media representation that made it into something and then people started to think there is a social threat there. Recently, crimes like knife crime and terrorism have received a lot of publicity and therefore there is a lot of public concern over this. And so again, one thing that when we did this in class, we discussed the coronavirus and how the media has portrayed the coronavirus and how, um, how things like panic buying was that made worse by the media? Was that just something that was happening and it was brought attention? Or do you think people suddenly started thinking everyone else is mass buying, I need to go mass buy? What about the um, the rates of how the coronavirus is going up or down? So, oh, it's on the rise, oh, it's on the decline, oh, it's on the rise. Do you think, again, that's caused a panic within society, how the media has represented it? How has the media represented the vaccine, for example, or how the government has deal, uh, dealt with the coronavirus? So the coronavirus is a really, really good example that you could think about. Yes, it's not a crime, so it's not a crime, but it shows how the media creates and impacts upon the way that we perceive things. So again, coronavirus can be used as an, as an example of crime, like knife crime, but it is an example of how the media can influence and impact the way that we see things. Impact three, perceptions of crime trends. Um, so Question one, do you think crime is increasing, decreasing or staying the same? Generally, the public perception of crime is that it's going up. Uh, the Crime Survey of England and Wales found that in 2018, 72% of people thought national crime had gone up and 43% thought local crime had gone up. Um, why do you think there's a difference between national and local perceptions? Um, we know more about our local areas than we do about national. Um, so we're dependent on the media to tell us what's happening in London, for example, when we're up on the coast or what's happening um, somewhere else. So you, you get your perception about what is happening nationally by the news. And if news only ever report bad things, then you will think that nationally the, the crime is going up. Whereas you get a bit more of a reality check when you with your local because you actually know locally what's going to happen because it's around you. This shows that the media plays a key role in perceptions of crime. In fact, the research shows crime is decreasing. This was from the 2017 crime survey in 2016. Um, so actually crime is going down. We saw in the last topic that the media often covers crime stories and prioritises stories about violent crime. This gives the public certain perceptions of crime as serious and growing. So because the newspapers always publish, publicise um, violent crimes people i think because the newspapers are always full of them that actually there's loads of them and they're going up but actually the reality is crime is going down but that's not the way the media represents it 
So what's the potential impact then of the public perception of crime? The potential knock-on effects are things like anxiety, people start getting anxious, depressed, stressed. Parents keep their children indoors because of fears of abduction, sexual abuse or paedophiles. Um, yet actually, in reality, children are more at risk at home uh, with family members than they are with strangers. But again, that's not publicised in the newspapers because that's not known. What happens behind closed doors people don't know about, whereas newspapers advertise what's going outside. And so people think that's a bigger issue when actually... Um, um, children at risk are more uh, likely at risk at home than they are outside. People leaving neighbourhoods because they think the neighbourhood is bad because the crime's going up. Um, it has been shown that women and elderly are more likely to fear becoming victims of the crime on the streets when actually, in fact, it is young males who are far more likely to be victims of violence on the streets. Again, is that because the media rarely um, documents men, um, young men getting violently attacked, whereas is it that we advertise women getting violently attacked or elderly more? Again, is it the way the media is picking the stories? Is it the way the media represents things? Perception of crime trends. Research by um, Schlesinger, Schlesinger, singer Schlesinger. There we go. And Tumba, it's a good job it's a written exam, isn't it? And Tumba um, showed fear of crime is higher among readers of tabloid newspapers and people who watch a lot of TV. This could be because of greater exposure to media representations of crime. And again, you might be able to see that with the pandemic um, and how people that have read the news or watched the news so much again i've got this real fear of what's going on, on outside in the world and because of the way that this fear mongering happens in the the newspapers or on the news sometimes the public perception of crime is accurate this perception is more likely to be based on local knowledge so knowing people who have been burgled than the media impact for stereotyping so when we did this together we discussed and worked through these different questions we had a look at what is it what is a stereotype what do we mean by stereotype do you ever feel stereotyped do you think there's a stereotype that you fall into um write down the characteristics most likely to be stereotypical of a criminal do you think there is any truth in the idea that some people are more likely to commit crimes than others and how might the media play a role in stereotyping criminals So this idea of stereotypes, we, we all fall into many stereotypes. Um, you might fall into a stereotype with your age, with your gender, with your sexual orientation. You might fall into um, a stereotype because of your job, um, etc. So there are many stereotypes. Where do these stereotypes come from? And where do they come from when you're talking about crime and criminals and what stereotypes surround criminals so is this because the way the media portrays it is it the way the media shows certain things so again these are really interesting questions to consider typifications by aaron kikurel kikurel um, Kikorel's theory holds that police, judges, probation officers and prosecutors hold stereotypes of the typical delinquent. These are called typifications. They are at least partly caused by the media representation of criminals, mugshots. So what are the aspects of a typification? They look at young, lower class male unemployed, often from a BAME background, uh, from a rough neighbourhood bad attitude to authority, poor educational record and associated with others known to the police, so uh, stereotyped through association. So these typifications is basically you are guilt and unproven innocent if you fall into them categories. You are, when you stand up in court or you have a jury, you will be judged just based on how you look because of these typifications that we have. The impact then of this stereotyping, it increases our mistrust of some sections of society, harsher sentences for some groups than others, and potential targets of some groups by the police, i.e. Um, sorry, stop and search. So, for example, um, certainly around Scarborough, um, but I imagine it, it will be a, a widespread thing, there are certain cars um, that give off a certain impression about the drivers that are often stopped by the police. So this could be for drinking alcohol, um, 
um, drug distribution, speeding, etc. And so just by the car, a judgment is then made about maybe the person that's driving it and then that person being linked to potential crimes. These are stereotypes. These are stereotypes that we do. Um, and But these stereotypes are often come from the media, but also the way the police judge and respond to certain groups of people. Impact five, levels of response to crime and types of punishment. The media has an impact on the level of response to certain crimes. For example, the Mods and Rockers Cohen noted that there were arrests before any events, uh, offence sorry, had been committed, provoking people into offending by pushing them around until they responded. So basically, uh, what that's saying is um, they were already being arrested before they actually did anything. So it then provoked people, well, you've already arrested them and they haven't done anything, so I might as well do something and then get arrested so it provoked people it pushed people into doing things it's a bit like when a teacher sends a student out and the student goes oh I haven't done anything and so what that then shows so you still send them out anyway but what that shows is oh well next time I might as well play up because you're going to send me out anyway um, and so people respond people react people push against authority in that way the London riots, punishments given to rioters were 25% longer than usual. The impact of this response to crime is to produce disproportionate sentences that fail to reflect the seriousness of the crime. This shows crimes of this nature won't be tolerated and may provide a deterrent for future crimes. Basically, they want to make an example of these people. So when it came to the London rioters, for example, they wanted to make an example out of them so other people then didn't do it. So the sentences were far harsher than usual so to put future people off from doing them. Finally, impact six, changing priorities and emphasis. The media sometimes voices concern about a particular type of crime. This can lead to changes in police or government priorities, may even lead to new laws being introduced. Certain major criminal events have changed the world, such as 9-11. 9-11 has changed the way that we uh, see and view the world, the way that we get through the airports, even on, on a basic level. This led to the 2001 anti-terrorism crime and Security Act, which allowed bank accounts of terrorists or suspected terrorists to be frozen. Um, it led to the 2008 Counter-Terrorism Act, which gave the police more powers to take fingerprints and DNA samples, heighten security airports, tube and train stations, uh, prevent strategy, and again, prevent is something that was brought into schools as well. The impact of change priorities can be huge, including travel, education and civil liberties. And so again, what, oops, apologies, what I would like to do please is you could use 9-11 as one of your examples of how an impact something like this has changed the way the world sees things but you could also have a look at dangerous dogs and illegal raves and see how the newspapers have reported on those and the impacts that that has caused which dogs for example now are illegal because of the way that the dogs have reacted and the media has represented them so you do need to know about all six I recommend and advise that you have examples that you can back all these up with. You can't just put EG 911. You have to put something more specific there to get your top marks. Um, um, but you do need to talk through all of the different six. Hopefully you found this one useful. If you do have any questions or problems, either go across the blog or write me a comment underneath. Otherwise, thanks very much, everybody. I'm going to do uh, 1.6 now, the final one. So uh, I'll see you into the next video. Bye for now, guys. Bye, bye, bye.